and welcome to Talk Funds. Uh, Heman Trustagi joining in. Thanks, Heman, like always, for coming by. Uh, lots of viewers asking questions. Let's go across to Chennai first. Uh, Rajesh has a question. Hi, Rajesh. Hi. How are you? Good afternoon. Yeah, good afternoon. Fine, yes. Tell me, I'm how can me. we help you? Yes, I'm good too. Yeah, see, yeah. Yeah. Uh, see uh, I was invested some data mutual from the last one year. Okay. But uh, my entire portfolio shows only negative. Mm -hmm. So I can see that the uh, last couple of weeks uh, the market was pretty down. Mm -hmm. So whether can I continue with the SIP, otherwise shall I stop? Because I was invested in this, some sector funds like life science and technology mm -hmm. fund uh, 10,000 rupees per month. Mm -hmm. So that is given a lot, but I hear that some U.S. problems, U.S. crisis, something else. So it will have with the software uh, companies. Okay. So whether shall I continue the same SIP or shall I shift to some other SIP, some other uh, funds? Which funds you will suggest me to go for SIP as well as lump sum also right now? And you've uh, invested for a year in all these three schemes? Yes, yes, yes. All these three schemes. You've been there for a year? Yeah. Okay. But all are loss only. Hmm. Hemant, what would you guide him? One thing I find is that he's picked up three schemes, all three from the same uh, fund house. Not so sure how prudent that is, but uh, and also he's gone in for a sectoral fund right up front rather than uh, trying to first get the flavor of trying to be with a more larger cap portfolio or a mid cap portfolio. He's gone straight into a sectoral fund. What's your advice to him? Well, I think Vivek, let me address his uh, concern about the fact that he has not made any money in the last one year. Uh, you know, when you invest through SIP, basically what you're doing, you're doing averaging. But one year means your actually average holding period, let's say, is around uh, six months or so. Uh, the fact is that most of the fund, uh, you know, wherever people have invested, investors have invested through SIP, have not made that kind of money in the last one year because we've seen the market, uh, you know, even though we've seen a lot of volatility, uh, broadly over the last one year, the markets are down by uh, four to five percent. So I think one shouldn't really worry about as far as that part is concerned because you know you're investing in equity for the long term. The objective is to build some capital over a longer period. So one year performance should not be worried. But if you look at the portfolio here, all three funds are from the same mutual fund. And as you rightly mentioned, you know, one of them is a sector fund, then there is a dividend yield fund. So very aggressive kind of portfolio, which is not ideal for someone who's looking to build capital over a period of time. So at best, what he can do is he can, you know, in terms of the quality of the portfolio, he can retain one fund, which is uh, uh, Tata Dividend Yield. Uh, for the remaining two, I would recommend he should exit from these two. His focus should be more on the fund which are diversified by nature and the two funds where, which you know, he can consider investing as one as a pure large cap fund, which could be ICICI focus fund. It's, it's a fund which takes a concentrated bet. And since he would be investing through SIP, I think that's the ideal fund uh, to have in the portfolio. And the second one could be a multi-cap fund like Reliance Equity Opportunity. So I think these three funds, he should be continuing investing in this and have a longer term time horizon. Yes, there, are, there can be time periods where you don't make the kind of money you expect from equities, but that's all right because over the longer term, you will get a better return than any other asset class. Okay, Rajesh, did you get that? Sorry. Yeah, sure, I got it. Yeah? Yeah. All right. Yeah, yeah. Take care uh, thank you. Yeah. Okay, let's head across to Chirag, who has a question. Hi, Chirag. Hi, Vivek. How are you? Good afternoon. Good afternoon, Vivek. Uh, my question being, I've invested in Fidelity Tax Investment uh, way back since 2006 in an SIP format. Right. But uh, day in and day out, I'm just looking at my portfolio, even though in green, but reducing. So I just want to know, should mm -hmm. I go ahead and stop and redeem the amount, or should I continue investing? Okay. Is this the only scheme you have, or do you have others uh, yes. as well? No. I, there is There are a couple of few, but those are not... In green, those are in red, so I've just kept them on hold. I just want, don't want to mm. remove the money right now. For them. Okay, all right. Uh, Hemant, you want to take that? Fidelity Tax Advantage Growth? Yeah, I think as far as this fund is concerned, it's been one of the best performing funds in the ELSS category. Uh, you know, if he is not, I mean, if you look at this fund, like I said, it's been doing very well. Uh, the thing is that, you know, he has another six months to go as far as, uh, you know, his subsequent investments are concerned because uh, once the DTC comes into being, uh, you know, ELSS schemes will cease to exist. So if the question is to whether he should continue or not investing in this one, I think he should continue investing. If he wants to pull out some money out of it, he must remember that this being an ELSS fund, there is a mandatory lock-in period of three years. So he can only exit from this fund wherever he has completed uh, three years and since if he has been investing through SIP each of the installment has to complete three years before he can uh, uh, pull out the money hmm. 
So since he's been with it for five years, the first three years of whatever he has put in, he can technically take out if he wants to. But you think that the scheme is okay, there's nothing wrong with it? No, the scheme is very good. I think he can continue. I mean, you know, right. he, he talked about some of the other investment where he's in the red. Mm. I mean, sometimes what, what we do is we pull out money from the fund which are doing well and allow the fund which are not doing well to continue. Mm. I think we should avoid doing that. Right. Okay, Chirag, did you get that? Yes. All right. Thanks for the Take advice. Bye-bye. Let's slip into a short break. We come back with lots more of your questions here on Talk Facts. All right, welcome back. Uh, it's a very flat market out there. In fact, we pretty much uh, evened out. Just three points up on the Sensex. The Nifty is about four odd points down, but uh, fairly flat out there. 50.68, that's where it is. Okay, let's uh, take another question. Uh, this is coming in from Murli Rao, who's a legal professional from Kakinada. Hi, Murli, how are you? Uh, fine, thank you. Yes, tell us, what's your question? Uh, I have invested my money in on a 10 in, uh, mutual funds. Right. Uh, such as uh, this thing, Franklin Templeton, high growth mm -hmm. company fund, 5000. Mm -hmm. The JM Financial Contra fund, 5000. Hmm. So Reliance Equity Advantage Fund 5000. Right. Tata Indo Global Infrastructure Fund 10,000. Hmm. Sundaram uh, BNP Paribas Energy Opportunity Fund 15,000. Hmm. James Agrin Infra Fund 5000. Hmm. Uh, Reliance uh, RNRL Fund 5000. Hmm. Dam James Tax Gain Fund 5000. Right. Merrill, Merrill Lynch Tax Gain 5000. And these were all uh, lump sum investments you made, or were these SIPs? Uh, these are invested in FPO in the year. Uh, That's right, but you put all the money at one go, right? Exactly. All right. Okay, Murli, I think you've got a, too many schemes. And secondly, I think you've been badly advised because uh, you know, you've been made to put in your money into FPOs, as you said. Uh, and across the board, many of them are just sectoral funds. There's no real clear-cut strategy that has been presented to you for building your wealth. All right? So, and, and, I, and, and too many schemes, just too many of them for the kind of money that you've put in. Actually, but let's my, my investment is actually for the purpose of my children's education. That's right. I agree right. with you. And I think all the more reason we therefore need to get you a good portfolio. Right? Uh, this okay. does not look like a good portfolio at all to me. Hemant, exactly. uh, would you guide him through? Oh, yes. I think uh, there are two or three major issues as far as uh, this particular portfolio is concerned. Uh, one is that it's quite evident that, you know, uh, Murli Rao has been following a strategy of investing in NFOs, like he said. Uh, you know, the problem is when you invest in NFOs, uh, you don't really think too much about what your objective is. Uh, you know, any NFO that comes your way, you end up investing in that. So this is what typically has happened here. Ten funds for an investment of 60,000 rupees, obviously, there are far too many funds. Uh, most of these funds, apart from two ELSs, are... Uh, basically thematic fund and one is a contra fund, not an ideal portfolio for someone who is trying to build up a corpus for his son's education. Uh, clearly uh, what has gone wrong is investing in NFOs only. The second is most of these investments, in fact all of these investments have been made uh, towards the end of 2007 and beginning of 2008 when the market was at the near peak levels. Uh, now the second problem here is that having invested at the peak level, uh, these investments have not been followed up with subsequent investments in equity, which is very, very essential for anyone who's looking at a long-term growth of the portfolio. Because if you make one-off investment, it is basically nothing but timing of the market. And definitely the timing has gone wrong here. Uh, you know, he has also mentioned that his time horizon was originally five years, which means another one year to go. Uh, if he cannot extend his time horizon, then I think the right thing would be that as and when the market start moving up from here, maybe in the next quarter or two, uh, he should start exiting from these funds and park this money in uh, debt or debt oriented kind of funds, maybe uh, ultra short term or short term uh, debt funds and, and then exit whenever he has to because he's investing for a particular purpose. Uh, if he can extend his time horizon by another three to five years, if it is possible, then my recommendation would be to exit from most of these funds except maybe one or two year lists because these are all thematic fund and a contra fund and go in for two or three good quality diversified fund which could be one in the large cap category, ICS, ICSA Focus, we just talked about that. The second one could be uh, HDFC Equity and Fidelity Equity. These three funds for 60,000 investment should suffice. 
And if we can continue investing through SIP, I think that will be the best thing. All right. There's an email we've got from Prashant uh, from Bangalore. He wants to invest in gold ETFs. Uh, he says, is it a good time or should I wait? I can invest 30,000 rupees as a lump sum, one-time investment. I can stay invested for short-term, four to five months. Hemant, uh, this is a classic case of investors uh, viewing this whole uh, run-up in gold prices as, uh, or treating it like another stock, the gold ETF. Uh, that's perhaps not the right way to invest through a gold ETF for it. Definitely not recommend, uh, you know, a lump sum investment at these levels. Although it is always advisable to have, uh, you know, a part of the portfolio invested in gold from the asset allocation point of view. But making, uh, you know, one-off investment uh, in, in the gold uh, just for the purpose of trying to make some money in four or, four or five months' time is perhaps not the right strategy. Uh, since the intent here is to maybe invest in gold ETF, one, can inv one cannot invest through SIP, but definitely one can invest periodically. Uh, but definitely the time horizon has to be extended, not for a period of four to five months. If at all one wants to start investing in gold, it should be done systematically, periodically, and for a slightly longer time horizon. All right, Heyman, thanks very much for coming by. We've run out of time on this edition of Talk Funds, leaving the market uh, in the red. Marginally, though, no great damage so far, but uh, one hour of trade still to go. Countdown takes you through that.